How are you guys? Jimmy Song here. I wanted to talk about a few reasons why on-chain scaling doesn't really make that much sense. Uh, and this is something that came up during the 2x debate. Obviously, the 2x people actually abandoned their fork and that resulted in Bitcoin emerging uh, as a single unified entity. A lot of the people that wanted to go over to Segwit 2x ended up going to Bitcoin Cash instead and we had the situation that we have now. Anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about why on-chain scaling is really, really difficult and doesn't really make that much sense from a technical perspective. Uh, first of all, uh, the Segwit2x version, uh, the one that, what, that happened a while back, uh, was based on a hard fork. And a hard fork is an involuntary forced upgrade. And that is, against, uh, is the antithesis of what Bitcoin is all about. It's all voluntary. It's based on people that voluntarily run the software. So as soon as you get out of consensus, you force a fork and that would be very bad. And in fact, uh, a lot of the users that were on the Bitcoin network um, basically said with the futures that Bitcoin uh, shouldn't hard fork for that reason because it's uh, it, it forces everyone to upgrade. Um, the other thing that uh, on-chain scaling is very bad at is you need to transmit transactions to everyone. Everyone needs to know about everything and that means that everyone has to transmit everything to everyone, everyone has to store everything, uh, at least if you're running a full node, and uh, everyone has to validate everything. Now, if, you, if you're if you more of a centralized coin, this uh, this isn't much of an issue because you know, you can you can run only like a few full nodes and you know everyone else can be SPV or something like that. In which case you're you're kind of, you kind of have lots of single points of failure. Those three people, uh, if they're only like five uh, different nodes in the world, then those nodes uh, can pretty much control everything. Um, and they can upgrade or not, and they, they can decide what's uh, good or not. So there, there are lots of problems with that model. Uh, but um, among others, the major thing is that you have a lot of cost in, uh, in transmitting things, if, at least if you're trying to be a decentralized coin. And, uh, and and it's it's kind of a lazy way to do things. Uh, if you, if you use something like the Lightning Network, see my other video on that, you can get a lot of throughput and a lot more transactions for a lot less cost. Not everyone has to know about it. Only the people involved have to know about a particular transaction, and it's uh, it's trustless and it works a lot better. Uh, so. Uh, on-chain transactions have a lot of cost to them. It, it centralizes if you end up uh, removing a lot of those costs. Uh, it, you, you end up having to force upgrades and things like that. So, you know, having a lot of nodes that are doing a lot of the work it, it is a part of the centralization. It's, uh, I mean, it's is a part of the decentralization of Bitcoin. And that's what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin? It's uh, it's not under the control of a single entity, and uh, and that's a very good property of money. Sound money is the reason why people like Bitcoin. It's it's because there's no central party, no single point of failure, no government choke point. If you had only five full nodes in the world, um, then the government can just go regulate those five nodes and say, hey, you know what? Uh, you need to roll back these transactions because they belong to drug users or uh, drug dealers or pedophiles or something like that. They can give whatever justification they want and they can choke those out and control it. Um, Bitcoin, by having a lot of nodes, allows freedom, and that's a very important property. Hopefully, this uh, this explains a lot of at least what I believe. Uh, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. I would encourage you to, uh, you know, express yourself on uh, in comments or whatever. Uh, anyway, this song is done.